Unsolved Mysteries. Out of deference to people who may still be living, character names in some of these true unsolved mysteries have been changed. Make mad the guilty and appall the free. Confound the ignorant and amaze, indeed, the very faculties of eyes and ears. This quotation from Shakespeare's Hamlet could well have been written about tonight's unsolved mystery. The mystery of the Chinaman's cell. is a wide-flung plantation bungalow high up on the slopes of Mauna Kea in Hawaii. Far below the rolling slopes, the blue Pacific sparkles through the green of the palm trees. Above, the volcano tints the cloudless sky in the reflected red from the crater, Hale Maumau, Pele's house of everlasting fire. On the lanai of the bungalow facing the tennis courts, the guests are sitting watching the play. Their host, Jim Ferguson, turns to face them as their laughter dies down. <laughs> so you fellows don't believe in haunted houses. Well, I don't, Jim. I believe that there's an explanation for everything. Well, isn't a ghost an explanation for a haunted house? <laughs> oh, you have a champion, Jim. Are you really serious, Betty? Yes, I'm serious. You see, both Jim and I have reason to believe in ghosts and haunted houses, haven't we, Jim? Not only reason to believe in them, but reason to thank them or him or it, depending upon how one feels inclined to refer to a ghost. <laughs> well, why have we never heard of this before, Betty? Been keeping secrets from your school day chums, have you? Well, I never mention it in company because I don't like to remind Jim of it. And I avoid the subject because I don't like to have Betty thinking too much about it. You see, some of our Japanese help and the hub do for them to realize that their boss is a believer in the same sort of thing. Stupid reasoning, isn't it? But it seems to work that way. Now, don't go into a lengthy talk on keeping up appearances just to sidetrack our inquiries about this haunted house. Oh, but it isn't a haunted house. <laughs> well, what is it, then? Uh, I suppose I'd better tell them. You might as well, since you've managed to get yourself in as deeply as you have. Well, when I first came out to the islands, things were a good bit different. No electric lights in the plantation houses, no automobiles, everyone rode horseback, and going visiting was an adventure. I was auditor at uh, one of the bigger plantations, and Betty was teaching school. We, well, we were rather fond of one another, even at that early stage in the proceedings. One Monday morning, I arrived down at the mill to find an excited group. Japanese, Portuguese, Hawaiian, everybody standing before the door. What's up? What's the matter? 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 Some man breaks into store and stealing money. The dickens you say? Hey, wait a minute there. Who are you? Where are you going? I'm the auditor. Oh, hello there, Mr. Watkins. Uh, the manager, Mr. Watkins, here tells me that you're the only man who has access to the safe. But I'm not. Mr. Watkins has access to the safe. How dare you? What do you mean by implying that I stole the money? Didn't you imply that I stole it when you told the sheriff that I was the only one who had access to the safe? You've got keys to the safe, too. But my keys are in the safe. I think you'd better come along with me, Mr. Uh, Jim Ferguson. All right. Come along. See you later, Mr. Watkins. Off to jail marches Jim Ferguson. A preliminary hearing decides that he must stand trial. Time drags by on leaden feet, and time's passing is made less bearable by the knowledge that everyone on the plantation believes Jim Ferguson guilty. Everyone, that is, but Betty. And one night, quite late, Jim hears the clanging of the outer gate and hollow ring of footsteps approaching down the long, stone-flagged corridor leading to his cell. Oh. 
Why, Betty. Hush, Dennis. Not so loud, dear. The sheriff wants to talk to you. Oh, yes, sheriff? Young fella, I don't know whether or not you're guilty. Well, he's not. I know he's not. Oh, thanks, Betty. Well, it's as I say. I don't know. But I have my doubts. I want you to do something for me. I'll do anything. Anything at all. All right. I want you to change cells. I want to put you in the old cell block. It's damp and it's uncomfortable. But it'll only be for one night. But what's the idea? Please do as the sheriff asks, Jim. Oh, all right. And one other thing. I don't want you to open your mouth tonight. Don't say a word. Oh, I'm not likely to. There isn't anyone to talk to. Well, but I'm having some guests visiting the prison in a few moments. <laughs> Friends of yours. And that's why I'm warning you. No matter what happens, don't you say one word. I won't. Come on, then. we got to hurry. cold and damp here. Well, goodbye for now, Jim. Goodbye, dear. Come on, Miss Betty. They'll be here any moment. Puzzled as to what the sheriff has in mind, Jim Ferguson stands in his cell, gripping the bars and staring out into the moon-flooded jail yard. Beyond the high jail wall, a group of Hawaiians strum their ukuleles, while the sheriff and Betty stand on the jail steps awaiting the arrival of their guests. Here we are, Sheriff. Come right into the jail. It's got to be a first time for everything, you know. <laughs> uh, how many prisoners, Sheriff? Eleven. Is that all? Hey, we don't have much crime here. We only built this new block because the old one is uncomfortable. Not because we needed more room. And, uh, how old is the old block? About 70 years. It's built of blocks of lava. Now, here's where we go through the lock. All clear. Oh, all the doors open at one time. Now, now, step inside. I thought you were coming with me, with us, Betty. The sheriff asked me. I hated to refuse. You will go back with me? Let's wait and see. You see, it's really quite a comfortable jail. Jails go. Now we go through this way, the old cell block. Oh, anyone in there now? Yep, Jim Ferguson. Oh, let's go in and see him. There he is in that cell next to the Chinaman's cell. Chinaman's cell? Yep, it's haunted. Who ever heard of a cell being haunted? Well, this one is. What fun, a haunted cell. What rubbish. <laughs> I'm surprised at you, Sheriff, believing in that stuff. Perhaps. And no one yet's been able to stay a night in it. Imagination. Pure imagination. Dare you to go in? Who, me? Yes, dare you to. I'll let you take me to the dance Saturday if you do. That's a bargain. All right, Sheriff, open her up. I'm not afraid of your ghosts. I'm warning you. Rot, open up. Watkins steps into the Chinaman's cell. The guests turn and leave. The moon sinks until only a slender beam of ghostly light shines over the empty jail yard. In a moment, that too is gone. Blackness. Walls, cell bars, passageway all merge into one black yawning void. What was that? Watkins starts and peers into the darkness. A light. A bluish phosphorescent light moving slowly across the front of the cell. A lantern? Yes, a lantern, carried by a yellowed, wrinkled hand. But there's nothing else. No arm, no body, only a hand. A hand that lays the lantern down. Twisted, gnarled, crooked fingers, yellow fingers, ghostly fingers reaching out. Out. Let me out. Let me out. They've gone. Let me alone. Help. Let me out. It's coming closer. Twisting, groping. Let me out. Let me out. I'll confess. I did it. I took the money. I'll admit anything, only let me out. Let me out. Let me out. In just a moment, you will hear a solution to the mystery of the Chinaman's cell. <laughs>
Ladies and gentlemen, inasmuch as any solution must of necessity be supposition, liberties of time, place, and character exist in the solution for which you have been waiting. We return to the Lanai before Jim Ferguson's house, where the guests await an explanation. That certainly was an experience. You see, the sheriff didn't really believe Jim guilty. Not after I told him that Watkins had been paying attention to me. And Betty was certain that Watkins took the money to get me sent to jail and out of the way. But the Chinaman's cell, I don't understand it. Uh, the sheriff told us that a Chinaman, guilty of murder and waiting execution, hanged himself in that cell. What of it? Well, any time the sheriff wanted to get a confession, he placed his suspect in that cell. And before long, they were shrieking to get out. Oh, so yours wasn't the only experience? Oh, by no means. All in all, the sheriff has obtained over 70 confessions that way. Even if the person put into the cell doesn't know about the Chinaman's suicide? It makes no difference, apparently. Oh, but there must be a logical explanation. Uh, let me read you extracts from the papers of the Society for Psychical Research, volume 15, page 64. While inquirers believe that the appearances are due to the agency of spirits of the dead, they usually suppose the method to be a telepathic impact on the mind of the living by some automatic projection from a consciousness which has its center elsewhere. I end the quotation. But here's an interesting remark in the Encyclopedia Britannica. The cases abundantly offered in the proceedings of the Society for Psychical Research suggest that certain localities, more than others, are centers of permanent possibilities of being hallucinated in a manner more or less uniform. So by Joe, even science admits the so-called ghost. Yes, and even if science didn't, I do. I saw it working on Watkins, and that's all the proof I need. <laughs> 